Today is World Press Freedom Day. My guest is Yavuz Baydar, who is editor-in-chief of Ahval website uh, online. Uh, Mr. Baydar, welcome to the program. Good to be with you, Gülten. Um, we, today we will talk about a bit uh, press freedom situation in Turkey. Uh, what are the current uh, situation? What can you say about it to us? Well, talking about the current situation, nothing would be exaggeration. Turkey today, in terms of media, an inferno with respect to freedom, independence and pluralism. Uh, kind of a republic of fear in an Orwellian sense, where the coverage of events and publication of uh, reports and comments, any stage of uh, news production and dissemination is an extreme challenge, full of risks. Uh, arrests and uh, lawsuits are uh, actually a daily reality. Uh, it marks Turkey as a champion of arbitrary jailings and Kafkaesque trials uh, against the dissidents and uh, free independent journalists. Uh, regarding punitive measures, uh, imprisonment remains a, a major one and the censorship also as a daily routine. Um, institutionalized oppression, let's say, has led to a sort of a deepening culture of self-censorship uh, with the overwhelming majority of uh, newsrooms of Turkish media uh, operating as open air prisons. Uh, and this prevents basic journalist standards to be practiced throughout the country. Um, regarding the rates, uh, the ratings, uh, Turkey remains not free for, uh, for a while in, in Freedom House rankings, in six consecutive years actually, to be exact. And also according to Reporters Without Borders, latest index uh, is 153rd out of 180 countries in 2021. Uh, remarkable because Turkey is supposed to be a negotiating partner with um, with the uh, European Union. And also it has become uh, the most prolific transgressor at the European Court of uh, Human Rights, ranking uh, first among the 47 Council of Europe member states concerning violations of uh, freedom of expression in 2023. So uh, if you look at the figures of jail journalists, uh, it is pretty high uh, to say the least, according to Platform for Independent Journalism. P24, which is based in Istanbul, uh, there were at least 83 journalists held in prison as of end of February 2021. That number seems to have been unchanged because of continuous uh, arrests and, uh, and, and, and trials. So um, this is um, uh, where we are in terms of, uh, in terms of freedoms uh, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, independence as well, because uh, independence as part of a main major criteria uh, leaves almost no room for, for independent media. 95 plus percent of the Turkish media sector is uh, now directly uh, has fallen under the control of, of, of the palace uh, and the tiny 5% uh, is struggling. Um, there are almost, with the exception of two or three, no uh, f relatively free TV channels and uh, only two or three somewhat um, independent or partisan on the opposition side newspapers. The TV is very important. It is a prime target of the, of the regime uh, because TV is a powerful media, very popular in terms of receiving the news. Newspapers are less important. They are in, you know, steep decline, uh, and they are losing more and more readers. More than half of the national circulation uh, evaporated in the past three or four years, uh, which is a very dramatic uh, situation. Regarding public broadcasting, there is none. It's state broadcasting, uh, Cold War style, which is under TRT is under strict control of the government and the palace. It's a propaganda machine, as well as Anatolian agency, which recently has been accused by the French government as a propaganda tool rather than a decent news agency. So these two key institutions, TRT and Anatolian agency, uh, is now gone. Uh, and um, it is also dramatic. And it leaves, uh, of course, Turkey stripped off of uh, public 
discourse, even the minimal in a minimal sense. So that's where we are in in general uh, of the of the media situation. So what about the online media situation in Turkey? Uh, is it a promising uh, situation or is it also going in a bad direction? Well, just because of what I told you in conventional media, much of the somewhat free flow of news and debate takes place in internet and social media, uh, news sites uh, where the you know free flow of um, news as much as it goes, uh, happens, and also dissent, which is in flux there. Uh, I'm talking about domestic online media. Of course, there are now more, more, more and more important uh, in diaspora media or exile media, like such as Ahwa News abroad, uh, where uh, journalists, free journalists in exile, are following the story of Turkey. Uh, the importance of uh, internet is, of course, uh, has been an attention or focal focal point of the regime, uh, and that's why it is now subjected to lots of uh, uh, punitive measures as well. Um, it's an endless battle, and um, according to the Association for Freedom of Expression, so far in the past maybe five years or even more, maybe seven since Gezi Park protests. Uh, around 450,000 domains, uh, nearly half a million, 140,000 URL addresses, 42,000 uh, tweets, and 11,000 YouTube videos were banned access to Turkey in the past seven years until October 2020. My our new uh, our our current uh, Ahwal News website has been banned three times, uh, two times for. Uh, reporting about uh, Berat al Bayrak's son in law of Erdogan, uh, corruption uh, stories, and also one interview with the Kurdish commander of the Syrian YPD forces. So, um, all these uh, uh, measures have been uh, updated recently. As of uh, July, August last year, the authorities are now base busy not only accessing bans uh, to these sites and social media accounts, etc., but also they are busy removing content and impose access bans uh, to those removed content. Um, it is arbitrary, uh, it is extensive, and uh, it can be so that uh, a family or somebody, uh, some figure, some VIP figure can basically apply uh, a complaint to the uh, institution, uh, state institution, which automatically, without any court order, can arbitrarily remove those contents. And it's a, it's a, it's a barrage of, of removals that's, that's been happening now in, in Turkish online media, which is also becoming more and more uh, oppressed uh, as, as we speak. Yeah. Also, in recent years, there are structural changes in media ownership and control of media. What can you say about this? And speak about Turkish media, they only think about jailings, uh, etc. But uh, uh, not only that, uh, it is just the tip of the iceberg. There are a huge number of sackings that happened, leaving almost no free minded uh, or professional uh, uh, honorable uh, colleagues uh, in the newsrooms or on the reporting fields. And also, uh, it's, um, they are now being stripped off of their press cards. Accreditations are, are done on basically uh, optics of uh, who is close to the government and who is not, and who is Turkish and who is Kurdish, all of these categories, etc. But also there were very, uh, you know, clear uh, administrative uh, changes of establishing, uh, uh, you know, remnant, uh, uh, establishing a permanent rather uh, uh, institutions. Uh, that will see to it that censorship is uh, completely systematic. One is the new one, the Directorate of Communications, rather new, established uh, two years after the failed coup, July 8, 2018. It's a very expansive, huge department employing at least 2,000 employees uh, situated in central Ankara in a 30-store tower building. Uh, and it is, uh, I would say, Goebbelsian. Uh, structure. It is uh, controlling the TRT, it is controlling the Anatolian agency, but not only that, all of the 
private media institutions are now being controlled and supervised and mean monitored by by this institution which interferes on daily basis uh, to the content sometimes it gives directors directives to to the newspapers to come out with the identical headlines pro-government headlines of course so uh tib turkish uh, uh, director of communications is uh, the one that sees to it that that the overall content of the media as as Goebbels put it, uh, is is a huge uh, um, uh, machinery to to control uh, the in, in inflow of, of of output of the information. Uh, second one is of course uh, the similar one. By the way, the director of communications is also now uh, controlling the issuing of uh, national press cards, which is a big headache for for Turkish colleagues. Second tool is the Supreme Board of Radio and TV. RTUK, or as we say, it retook. It claims to be an independent regulator, but it is only on paper. It is uh, ruled by a majority of the uh, ruling parties, AKP and MHP, and it is distributing on daily basis huge fines to the TV channels, especially on, on, on the political content. Third one is the Information and Communications Authority, BTK, that reports directly to the, the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure. And uh, it is, it is uh, controlling, as I mentioned, the online uh, media content. So um, the, that I will end with the state advertising authority as the fourth uh, structure that controls the print media. Uh, it oversees the official notices and adverts of the authorities, official authorities and the official institutions to, to the print, print, print press. Uh, since the attempted coup, uh, these uh, remnants of the critical and partisan press on the left flank or on the nationalist flank uh, have been facing systematic blockage of state advertisements, which of course hurts them a lot. So uh, overall um, picture of the Turkish media as of May 3, 2021 is, uh, is remarkably uh, uh, tragic, uh, I would say. And uh, as far as Turkish um, political scene is changed and back to the constitutional rights uh, and rule of law, uh, this decline uh, will most probably continue. Thank you very much for your comments on media freedoms in Turkey.